I'm not exactly known for my Pollyanna-ish optimism. Cassandra is the name that more readily comes to mind. That's because for the past three decades or so, I've been chronicling what I've seen as the progressive fracturing and weakness of Western society, a kind of cultural demoralization from inside, leading to a weakening of the West's ability to defend itself against threats from outside. But now, something extraordinary has happened. While the media is absolutely full of people rending their garments about the imminent destruction of democracy and freedom and how we're being taken over, all of us, by fascists and bigots, I'm actually more hopeful now about the future than I've ever been. Remarkable. Given the turmoil in the world and not least the terrible atrocity in the Berlin street market recently, this might seem even more strange. And we can all see, can't we, that Germany has laid itself wide open to this kind of attack and that its Chancellor Angela Merkel is even now in denial of the reckless stupidity of encouraging a great tide of migrants amongst whom are untold numbers who bear the West profound ill will and may even want to do it terrible harm. And it's not just Mrs Merkel, is it, but much of Europe, including Britain, which is in this precisely similar state of denial. And yet, you know, I actually think we might be on the verge of a Western spring. That's because I think we're truly in revolutionary times, or to be more precise, counter-revolutionary times. Because what we're seeing now in this great so-called populist revolt that's brought Trump to power in America and made Britain vote for Brexit is the people finally rising up against the whole mindset which has all but brought the West to its knees. This is a mindset which takes as its starting point that the West is bad. Bad because it's powerful, because it stands for cultural superiority and racism and nationalism and the oppression of everyone in the developing world. Only universalism is good. Only transnational institutions like the UN, EU, International Criminal Court, human rights laws, only these are good. And so these must take precedence over national laws and national institutions. The West cannot assert the superiority of its own traditions and culture based on the moral precepts of Judaism and Christianity because that's exclusive and discriminatory. Instead, it's got to be secular and multiculturalist and non-judgmental. And that means it must accept the mass immigration of peoples of very different cultures. And if they won't assimilate to the West, but try to make the West assimilate to them, well, anyone who objects to that must be a racist and a bigot. And any president or prime minister who says they're going to put their country's interests first must be a Nazi white supremacist. Uh, hello? Well, the people in Britain and America and Europe have finally had enough of all this hateful rubbish. Actually, I think mainland Europe is where I'm least optimistic, and that's because mainland Europe really has lost confidence in the idea of the Western nation, and I think in the whole idea of Western progress. I think that self-belief perished in the ashes of the Holocaust, that unprecedented crime against humanity which was committed in the very crucible of the Western Enlightenment. That's why Europe created the EU in the first place, to protect the world against the threat it thought it would itself represent forever. As a result, it's destroyed the independence of its member nations, and as a result of that, undermined the very democratic ideals it was supposed to uphold, which is precisely why the people of Europe are in revolt. But America and Britain are different. These have histories of resistance to tyranny, deriving from the institutions of liberty and the common law, which developed in Britain, the ultimate mothership of political freedom in the world. And now, through the election of Trump and the Brexit vote, there's a chance that America and Britain will once again restore the idea of the Western nation as something to be proud of and to defend against its enemies. Now, President Obama had a very different view. He wanted to undo the harm he thought America had done to the developing world. So he empowered those who want to bring down the West while he left America's allies to twist in the wind or worse. Well, President-elect Trump's declared intention to put America's interests first suggests he will reverse this. That won't be easy. 
the withdrawal of American power and resolve from the Middle East has empowered genocidal Iran and paralyzed moderate Arabs. At the same time, though, the turmoil in the Islamic world has so terrified the Gulf states that they're now making an unprecedented tactical alliance with Israel. Now, for decades, America has sanitized, rewarded and incentivized Palestinian aggression while bullying Israel to compromise its security. And that, in my view, is the real reason why the Arab-Israel impasse never ends. But now it looks as if Trump may upend that catastrophic strategy. If so, the potential exists for an American-Israeli strong horse in the region, which, with the new alliances being created with the Arab world, could bring undreamed of benefits to all of us. Now, people are understandably alarmed that Mr. Trump seems to admire Russia's President Putin. Well. We'll have to see how that particular one works out, won't we? But, well, the West hasn't exactly covered itself in glory so far where Putin is concerned, has it? It was President Obama who, through his infamous reset with Russia, tried to make Putin his friend and gave him instead a disastrous signal of American weakness. Now, Mr. Putin is certainly ruthless in pursuit of his vision of restoring the Russian Empire, but the fact is, he is so dangerous, that doesn't mean we can't be smart in dealing with him. His alliance for Iran, with Iran, for example, is driven by his need to defeat their common enemy in the Sunni Islamic jihadis. But these are the West's common enemies too. So the potential exists for a deal in which Putin is helped to defeat the jihadis in return for which he could be prized away from Iran. And who is better placed to pull that one off than the world's most famous dealmaker. Look, I really am not Pollyanna. I don't minimise for a moment the extreme dangers facing all of us in the world. Nor do I minimise the risks that go with having a volatile political neophyte in the White House. But I also think that what we're seeing in this great revolt in Britain, America and Europe is an eruption of self-belief in Western civilization, expressed through the passionate desire to express that culture through democratic institutions based on national traditions, history and laws. And that's why I think that we, if we all just hold our nerve, we might just be on the verge of a Western spring.